Jared, here we are again. Breaking business barriers. How how you doing, man? You doing all right? I'm good. I'm good. Blessed to be uh, staying busy and healthy and uh, can't complain. How about you? How's your year uh, winding down here? Man, it's winding up. You know, it's there. I don't think that we ever wind down. It's wind, winding up. So it's it's time to time to let it rip. Here we are on episode 90, JT. You know, 90 different guests throughout uh, the last almost year and a half, two years. So this is fun. We have a special guest. Can't wait to introduce him real fast. But why don't we give a couple uh, special thanks to someone that you and I, two people that you and I have recently had on the podcast of Breaking Business Barriers. And that was Brian Berjans and Dot Compton. So special high fives to those guys. It was great to have them join us and, and share their forks in the road and, and all that stuff. So again, this is Brent Duhame, your host, along with co-host Jared Ty. VJ, let's just get right into it, man. I read your bio. I got to see all about it as we were talking before we uh, started to record. Man, an ag, ag guy, tech, business owner. I just think it, I think that's awesome. Where, where, where can our listeners find you on social media, first and foremost? In social media, they, they can look for my first name, VJ, uh, B-I-J-A-Y, uh, space Warma. VARMA. So got it. Kind of, yeah. And we'll we'll make sure we tag your websites and a couple of other things where people can find you, VJ. That, that would be Cloud Mellow. That, that's the company we're gonna talk about. That, that that that's what given me the identity I have in, in Dallas area. So um, anything if you search for uh, I picked the name like so unique that <laughs> there were no duplicates. So uh, it is Cloud C L O U D and uh, Mellow, M-E-L-L-O-W. So it's a one word. Hey, I had a quick question for you. So isn't mellow Greek? Is that a Greek term? I don't know. I, uh, I was just passing by on Preston Road. Uh, I found a pizza place uh, six years back. And I saw that word, uh, told my wife, hey, we're going with cloud with a tech, tech name and a mellow to, to be calm and humble. So <laughs> that's how it came up. I'm, dig- I'm digging it. I'm digging it. So why don't you give everyone a, a little bit about your backstory, VJ? It's it's fascinating. We always love learning about where someone maybe started, the middle ground, and and to where they are today, and then what's next. Take it away, VJ. Absolutely. Um, first of all, thank you for Jared and Brent to um, support local community and, and, and creating something like this, um, where everyone have a voice. Um, to talk about what they came through and, and also can be helpful for, for the next uh, set of people who would like to do something on their own. So um, name, my name is uh, Vijay Konda. I'm, I'm from India, um, been, been in Dallas since 2010, uh, always in Texas. I love Texas. Um, I went to SMU, um, coming from uh, an agricultural background. Um, this is actually the first gen coming out and going to school and doing something, um, technology or, or, or anything. Um, so always being raised in farms with animals around and, and farms around. So that's where my heart is. That's why I moved to actually McKinney and, and living here um, to, to get such kind of a feel. Um, yeah, I went to, went to SMU, um, started working at Ericsson, uh, Bank of America and a couple of technology companies uh, into IT. Um, always from the way uh, I raised up and, and also having good friends as partners, uh, um, have this like-mindedness of starting something on our own um, and being an entrepreneur has been the spirit all the way around. I mean, when I was in SMU, uh, me and my friend, we actually bought a, uh, a 2001 uh, $1,500 car and started right sharing uh, since then, uh, which was paying our uh, bills for the meal. So, um, that, that, that's, that's always been there and, and uh, we don't step back in, in trying something uh, because of the fear of failing. So that, that's how Cloud Miller has started. Um, we are into um, end-to-end digital marketing and a digital services company um, serving um, businesses from small and medium to corporates. We do anywhere between social media marketing, website development, custom software development, content design, PR. Um, anything related to online side of things. And 
yeah, this is our seventh year uh, in business um, right here in uh, McKinney and uh, Frisco, we have two offices and uh, we are also structured in Florida and India. So you started in a garage, if I read this right, like many entrepreneurs, you know, on a, on a paper thin budget with two or three people and now not just uh, here in Texas, but I believe you have people working around the globe, different different places in the United, uh, across the globe. And are you somewhere over 70 employees and growing? We, we are. Uh, we are actually right now around 75 uh, plus full-time uh, employees in Cloud Mellow, um, located between Texas, Florida, uh, and India, where I'm coming from. So yeah, we have a good bunch of uh, crowd uh, between these these uh, two countries. Jerry, do you have a question for Vijay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vijay, thanks again for coming on. Uh, Vijay and I actually worked together. Uh, I had a found out about a, a, a property that was for sale that seemed to be a good deal. And I put it on my Facebook. I said, hey, who wants to, um, to uh, look into this property? And Vijay said, I do. <laughs> So uh, it's just amazing the power of uh, social media. And we actually met through, I believe, through Facebook as well. So, uh, but yeah, I had a question for you, VJ. So in growing a company, you know, so large, uh, do you feel like you, you started small and it just grew on its own to where you had to add employees? Or was it more of a, if you build it, they were, will come type thing to where, you know, you built the framework first and then the business followed uh, that's a good question, Jared. Uh, to, to, to put it that way, uh, it, it, to keep things in perspective, uh, like when we start things, right? So the, the majority of entrepreneurs or startups, the very good problem they would have is not able to scale or not able to deliver um, when work comes in, right? So it is basically like a chicken and egg situation uh, where we don't want to be in a place like, okay, we expect business six months down the road and then we, we hire people. Uh, we don't believe in that. So I think one thing which helped us uh, from the get going is always we used to have 15 to 20 percent buffer of um, team members who were not actively working on any kind of business, right? We believe in uh, research and development. We believe in, in training and adapting to new technologies. So the framework and, uh, and the people were always there before even we get business uh, to be prepared. That's fascinating. So you said you, you, you basically like to have 15 to 20% more employees or more, you know, employee availability, uh, if that makes any sense, than you have work at any given time. Uh, absolutely. Any, any time when, 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 when our books were negative, uh, always, even though uh, when we have no business at all, um, we, we had always 15 to 20% more people, more infrastructure and the ability to scale. Uh, because I would not like to get into the problem of not able to deliver something and get on, get a bad impression um, because 95% of our business grown organic. We don't have traditional sales teams. Uh, we will, but uh, that is why it is very important for me um, that like the reputation or customer service is key for me. And your customer service has to be good to have 95% you know, of your business be organic. You know, in my field, you'll see kind of a split between agents. You'll see agents that pay a lot of money for leads. Uh, and then you see other agents who don't pay at all. And I think that the difference is that focus on customer service. You yeah. know, you take good care of your clients, um, you know, more business is going to, to come to you. Sure. I'm with you on that. VJ, when you made your first official hire, that that person he or she had to be somewhat nervous all right this is a startup so how did you find those first maybe one two three hires because after you after you start to scale you know then all of a sudden it's like okay all right i got it they're on they're on good short ground How, how'd you go about that yeah i i think that that is really really important uh for just not me, for anyone who is starting something on our own, right? So because when we start something, we think it as our baby um, and don't want to delegate it to anyone uh, and all that, right? So I had my hard lessons. So, but for your question, even before um, 
uh, hiring any one of us, right? So I am an individual contributor myself and, and my partner, uh, he, he is local as well. So I'm the co-founder. So we have two people who started, right? So um, his name is Rayans and, uh, and he has filled me the confidence required to, to go think, do things on our own. I, I'm like a young guy coming out of school and, and starting something. So that kind of a confidence coming, I'm, I'm coming from a different country and starting brand something on my own. So, so people are important. So my partner uh, has empowered and given the confidence um, in doing what we can do. And, um, and having an offshore company is, is not easy or um, not able to, because there is a perception. I think if you go through my interviews also, I always emphasize on the fact that um, clients and businesses have a perception of how a person sitting across another country off the shore and be able to deliver the same way we are doing it here locally, right? So uh, that is why I think uh, three or four um, key important people who have been there since the inception, they didn't come because we have big offices or big infrastructure or this is a big company. They came um, because they, they believed uh, in the vision or they believed in us before even joining the company. And, and, and we are thankful for them. Um, one of them were, were part of family. Uh, that's how I pick. Uh, one is a family and, and two um, have like-minded people. That's how I pick the first two or three of them till I get a confidence on can I, can I move forward? Because um, this, is, this is a self-funded company, um, used our own salaries, um, didn't take a penny uh, from home or no loans uh, and, and gave them the confidence. The first year we didn't have a lot of business, but still all the jobs are secure. Um, never had them have the job insecurity. And, and uh, I think we are bearing the fruits today because of that. Vijay, I love how your story just plays into the American dream, you know, that you're able to move here from another country um, and, you know, start your own business. And, you know, you're truly an entrepreneur. You know, you're not working for someone else. You're working for yourself. A um, couple questions. What, what are ways that, that, you know, Native Americans can be more, um, more sensitive and just more appreciative of, you know, other cultures? I realize that's super vague, uh, but I feel like it's, it's a relevant question in, uh, in today's day and age. And then my second question is going to be about, um, about, you know, what, what are the best clients who, you know, who, who can utilize your services, but I realize those are kind of separate questions. <laughs> sure, no, uh, absolutely. The, the first thing actually is, is the, the question is actually close to my heart uh, because as, as you said, uh, I'm very thankful to this country uh, where, I mean, um, this is where I started earning uh, till then I, you know, with, with home, um, getting, getting, getting money from my parents and all that, right? So um, America has taught me uh, what hard work is and, and what can be done. So absolutely, um, I'm thankful uh, for this country to give that perspective or give, um, give the channel uh, for us to grow and also empower a lot of uh, others with opportunities and with mentoring. Now coming to culture for sure, um, I did have my setbacks on when a 24 year old, an Indian guy is, is going, I mean, uh, as Brent was saying, right, this is a no filter interview. So. Uh, when we go to an Italian restaurant, um, people will have limitations on, on what our capabilities are, on what, what we can do. Okay, this guy, uh, maybe he have more Indian uh, ethnic background on what can he do about it. So, um, but at the same time, like, like just let's take Dallas, right? So that's how we've grown our business. But today um, we have clients from East Coast to West Coast. We are just not confined to Dallas because um, the founders are here, but our team members are spread out um, through the board. Um, so, but I think the attitude we have with the people here are, are more open um, to exploring things and, and see, give them a try and see what they come back with, right? So that's what I actually ask them. Hey, can we do a pilot or can we do an assessment and see if it actually fits your criteria before you start working with us? Um, and, and that's what actually helped us um, in doing what we do today. Uh, for our diverse portfolio of clients, and uh, and coming to coming to the type of people we work with, anywhere from small and medium businesses, brick and mortar, e-commerce, 
uh, with, with COVID, right? So we were getting really big into developing e-commerce and how we can empower businesses with uh, e-commerce. Um, and, and for corporates, like a lot of media, trade marketing, search engine optimization, um, content development, design, UI, UX is, is where our core portal is, right? So um, it's, it's a fair combination between organic and lead generation. Um, marketing, I would say. VJ, again, going back to what Jared said as well, th those first few hires, they joined you because they had the trust, but also liked your story and your vision. I think that's true with any company, especially someone who is just starting, whether it's a small, small company, medium size, all too often in very large companies, a story gets lost through all these people and no one can really tell. And I, I love stories about companies love to hear the backbone, you know, those people that were doing uh, the real heavy, heavy listing. And then those first, first few hires that are going to be your advocates, you know, other people are going to follow because they can tell your story probably just as good as it is, if not, maybe in some cases with a different, a different vision, same vision, but maybe just a little bit different look. All right. So do you have some advice for the entrepreneur that's out there already, maybe someone that's thinking about making that step into, oh my gosh, I'm going to do my own gig. I've got this great idea, but I'm just a little nervous. You talked about self-funding versus, and we all know there are investors of different sizes and sorts that that would love to see a great idea and they'll invest in that idea. Do you have, do you have your own personal thoughts on that? Absolutely. Um, so I I think a lot of the times when we hear about startups or when we hear about private equity or any kind of companies, uh, it gives a perception that the main important aspect of growing a business or starting an idea is funding. But uh, I would advise uh, anyone to, to a little deviate from the topic of, okay, we need a lot of funding or we need a lot of money or we need a lot of loans to start something rather than um, use their idea and start something, get down to the road and, and try something on your own, like as, as a side gig and, and see how, how actually people are responding to it or, or do some trials. So, so today, uh, Cloud Mellow actually invests and supports a lot of uh, startup companies in technology, uh, into agriculture and a lot of things. And that is the first thing we would say, hey, don't worry about the funding, but uh, let's say I'm, I'm getting you paid the first two months. I would like you to go out in, into the market and, and try out things and come back. And that is when you, you get the real feedback, right? So to really know how, how good is your idea is or how sellable your idea is. So uh, I would like to try, I mean, I follow Elon Musk uh, before Steve Jobs and, and he was saying yesterday, uh, I was seeing him a, a post on social media, right? So um, you need to try something, it is better and try and fail than not to do anything uh, with some inhibition. So um, I'd ask them to try without without any kind of inhibitions and, and get down to the road. It can be a little scary for an ent entrepreneur that maybe is going from a W-2 job to all of a sudden, um, well, nothing's nothing's coming in the mail as a paycheck or you know, not no automatic deposit. It can be really scary, but I think that's a tremendous advice. And we've had other entrepreneurs you know, from where they've done their own startup, self-funding to that maybe they've taken on some investors and, and what have you, but they all have very similar advice to what you just said. Maybe start with a side hustle, side gig, get proof of concept. And that thing may take off faster than you know, may not, you know, who yeah. knows, but at least you're not operating, operating scared. I think, I think that's, uh, I think that's great advice. And, and thanks for doing that, BJ. Hey, we always ask our, our folks, you know, this is kind of the foundation of our, of our show. And Jared and I always ask, well, we've all, we've all crossed or, or we've all met that Oak tree that's right in front of us. And then it's, we call it the fork in the road. Is there a, is there a fork in the road that, that you can think of that, man, I don't know if I should go left, I should go right, but thank gosh, I, I took one of the turns. Um, uh, I, I, I think uh, I'll give you a quick background on why. I, I think I mentioned it before on, on the way we raised. Uh, because uh, right now, after coming to States, we know what W2, getting a day job, getting paid, paying our bills and all that, right? So back in the days where I'm coming from, um, there is no set job duties. I mean, dad goes to the farm, uh, 
the season comes in, like if, if there is no rain or something, we are, we are done for the, for the day, right? So um, that, that kind of actually ignite uh, the spark uh, within ourselves that there is no easy money or there is not something which comes easy will go easy. Um, so we believe in that. And when we want to, when we wanted to start something, me and my uh, partner, um, we wanted to go all in um, and, and see and then grow upon it, right? So it's not like a Eureka idea. We are into services business. So, so things will change so rapidly that we need to adapt to it. So yeah, in 2013, 2014, when we wanted to start this, um, we took a decision either do this or either do completely different and have a hundred percent day job, right? So b- both are amazing in this country. Um, and uh, at end of the day, along, along with the bills, uh, it is the self-satisfaction is what we have. And that's what I think makes me sleep peacefully. And uh, we know for a fact, it, it is not going to be, the work-life balance is going to be disturbed a little bit, right? So we don't have, it's not like a Monday to Friday thing, right? So I actually work more on Saturday and Sunday than weekdays. So, but it is uh, a conscious decision. We had our ups and downs, uh, but no regrets um, forward. Like, I mean, I think we crossed a bigger hurdle this year as well. And like in all the other businesses, we, we see uh, downtrend in, in other of our businesses as well. But uh, uh, we are geared up and ready to, to dive into more uh, into entrepreneurship um, the coming years. Very, very cool. Very inspirational. JT, before we wrap things up here with Vijay, you have, a, you have another question? Vijay, can you remind me what kind of uh, animals you grew up with on, on the farm? Sure. Um, even, even today, um, we have around 400 cattle um, in our farms, like cows, buffaloes, and uh, all the milk um, and everything comes from them there since 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 I, I i'm born at my place so three to four hundred cattle um a hundred pigeons actually um and tortoise um deers picards um and we have like eight to ten dogs uh, back home today and three horses that's awesome india's on my place uh, list of places to visit some days so absolutely well, maybe maybe there's that. a maybe here's another idea of a side hustle for you, Vijay. Maybe maybe it's a vacation destination where people can come out and work. We know how tough it is on a farm, and you know that no one punches a clock there. It is, it is. I was actually talking to Jared, right? So that will be maybe his next project to find me a, a ranch. Uh, one of our uh, good friends and a great clients, they have a big ranch in Salina with, with a lot of cattle in there, right? So I actually go there, have fun uh, there and, and get to the nature and take the kid out there and, and get them understand uh, where we are coming from. So real quick question. So the cattle that you guys raise, are they are they raised for meat as well or? They, they are not. In, in India, um, we mainly, the, the main intent to use is to have organic compost. Right? So, uh, so the waste coming from them is actually a natural fertilizer for the entire farm. And, and the milk is a byproduct, right? So when we have a lot of uh, cattle, uh, we get a lot of uh, milk uh, and we use it for dairy products and, and doing it uh, as a milk business as well. That's fascinating because I knew the cultural significance of, uh, of cattle. So I wasn't sure if there were different variations based on region or... Yeah. It's amazing. Most certainly. All right. As we wrap things up here, VJ, we kind of do the fast track to the end with just a few miscellaneous questions. I forgot one important one. Is there something out there that that you've experienced? You've been across the globe far more miles than most. That really has nothing to do with it. Maybe it does. Is there something that comes to mind that just would crack us up? Our listeners be able to get to know you better, even better. Is there something that you experience that, man, you just you shake your head at? And it would crack us up. I, I think, yeah, I mean, it doesn't need to be outside of the country. I have a one year old, uh, so I'm a, I'm a new father. Uh, and, and when she's eight months old, and when I'm in the digital services business, we actually build solutions around Alexa and, and Google Echo and everything, right? So one day um, in the morning at 8 30, she started crying. And uh, I said, Hey, Alexa, can you make a lion sound? 
and 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 it started roaring and this girl um started laughing and stopped crying since then she she need um a lion sound in order for her to wake up and in order for her to sleep um uh, after when she on her first birthday uh, early morning at 7 o'clock we were hearing a small noise saying hey hello hello and and it's actually the baby girl trying to call alexa um and making that sound because the dad and mom were <laughs> way deep asleep uh, and it's amazing to me like how uh that i am actually learning from her how to adapt to new things new 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 things coming up right so that is actually an eye opener uh for all of us to to get adapted to new new situations after covid anything comes i think life should move on so uh we we actually make it <laughs> it's pretty pretty funny and stress relieving for us and today she already talks to alexa uh, right now <laughs> <laughs> that is funny and and every parent could probably appreciate that. You know, I'm not a Alexa user, but I see my kids use it, even my mother-in-law use it, and I'm like, you know, who are they talking to? But coming from a tech guy, that that is uh that that's really good, VJ. VJ, when you when you made that decision and it was probably going to be really hard to come to the United States, did you make that decision with your head or your heart? It's always hard for me. Um uh and and uh after i think 6 to 7 years and taking half my hair out on my head uh, the the head piece also is coming in to make sure the number should work uh but it it's always the heart i it it will not change um uh the instinct and gut needs to be always first for me uh before anything were you worried about what friends or family would think you know you're making a you're making a big move and i i went from south dakota to texas over a period of time and you you know there's always concerns of what people think my my wife made a a trip from the east coast to the central united states you know there's there's big moves were you worried about what friends or family were thinking i i wouldn't say worried um uh, i think i i'm when it comes to business i'm a, an extrovert but when it comes to circle i'm an introvert um but i have a good um, my wife and myself we studied together so she actually knows the struggle so uh half of the burden is is gone there she wouldn't complain uh, me going out at morning 7 and coming out in at night in the one but uh yeah there were a lot of inhibitions uh when we started something hey what what is if it's going to fail and all that but uh, uh i am i'm not worried and 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 i'm happy that I have a good support system within the family and friends to to actually believe in something i'm doing and then walking it up so i think that's very important for anyone who would like to do something uh the least or the greatest thing we can do is is let them try. Well folks, you, you've heard it here from VJ from half halfway across the globe to being a successful entrepreneur. I I just like it's amazing. Yeah, you know, I don't have the I know what it's night what it's like to maybe move 1000 miles away but not half a globe and I I just think that's fascinating finding the opportunity and the things that you shared today are really really important whether they're they're young high schoolers thinking about you know what's my next step before before or after i go to college i think you shared some some great gold nuggets and and with that vj we really appreciate it we'll make sure we do a write up for you and and where people can contact you don't be surprised if they reach out maybe a little of advice It'd be really cool so uh, jared jared tie by with tie and your host brent duham thank you for joining us on breaking business barriers peace out thank you all thanks guys